And I show up to all the meetings before I have a hearing with the city where I'm going to get approval or disapproval or something out of a cordiality to the neighborhood I'm becoming a part of. Yes. So that's the point that I wanted to make. Well, we certainly did not mean to not be. You didn't mean to, but you did. Yeah, but you did. But you did. Well, and, and so again, I apologize for that. Just know that, you know, I do work in a lot of urban environments. It wasn't our intention to not be a good neighbor. I mean, they asked, there were some things that they asked us to do as far as removing some signage and decals. We want to be a good partner in the neighborhood, so we did those things in good faith. So we are trying to do those things. So I apologize for any frustration that you had. I'm just kind of letting, letting you know that you're unfortunately no, for, for seven years you that. started in, with the wrong foot. Yes. And prior to coming to the meetings, yeah. by 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 putting on work violations, working at the wrong hours of the day till midnight at times, eleven o'clock at night. Uh, well, and if, garbage, and if they were garbage. doing that, they were doing that without my approval. I mean, and well, I do but, travel in and out. I do know I work in Virginia and I work across the East Coast. Mm -hmm. But they were doing that without approval because mm -hmm. we don't. My teams are to follow the rules, yeah, and so if they didn't, then again, the, I'll agree. take that up with my contractor, and I appreciate the well, you should, and, I'm, and you should and be aware of it because you got plenty of violations on your yes. on your work permit. So. Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you do you represent um, 7-Eleven in, in, in what capacity? What is, what I'm the remodel project manager, oh. so I'm responsible for the okay. construction project. In, 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 what, in which other role? I'm the project manager for the signage. The you sign. you to install the signage. Guys, one, one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. We have, 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 have an hour. I, I'm asking a question, Can I ask one question? I have asked a question all night. I worked with the DRA to come up with So you So you deal strictly with the signage? Correct. And you deal strictly with remodeling? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. You have a question? I was at the New York meeting. I requested this here. Most of the residents in this, this neighborhood are not happy having two, two or seven lemons on Hanover Street. <laughs> um, now, if you were putting this on Newberry Street, would this sign go on Newberry Street? Or would it go on Charles Street in Boston? The, this, are you talking about? And I'm not the style, familiar with the style, style, the style so, of the yeah. signage. Well, unfortunately, they're doing it on Hanover Street. They're not doing it on Newberry yeah. or Child it's Street. Same, and I understand. I know there used to be. Person. I know there was a previous 7-Eleven on Child Street that is no longer there. It's now a bank, and I know that they had signage that was different than what they're looking, looking to do. And uh, you tried I had, to create I, a sign package that was complementary to the neighborhood. So that is a one of a kind. But, you know, CVS had no problem being complimentary to the neighborhood. They had no problem putting the sign up. Well, and I think that the color and the design that we're proposing does fit. It doesn't stand out. I mean, for example, when I'm staying at the store, like there's a 1-800 flowers across the street, and that is a very, you know, corporate sign. It doesn't really fit with the neighborhood. So but we really tried to make sure it was... Sign, but look at the, all the other signs going back down on the other side. Yes, I mean, there's definitely a variety yeah. of signage up, up in sign. North End. You're yes, picking up that one, one sign on the other street. Because I work in a long real team. And this sign is a handcuff. Um, also, it's my understanding that it was requested to have a deli. I was in the store today. There's no deli. So no, we've was, never proposed having a deli. Our all of our food is brought in. It's made in a commissary. It's brought in fresh every day. It was a request, and, and you know, I think people had the idea that you were going to kind of, but it fit with what the white hand hand same type of um, service at the White Yeah, Hand that's that's Hand. just not, 7-Eleven is not set up that way to do a deli environment. So, uh, but the one thing that I know that I shared with the operations manager, Mary Cadigan, she's well aware that they wanted to try to have like more of a local offering. So I know that, that she is looking into that and addressing that on the operational yeah. side. And um, what, I have one, I just have one, one request. I know that you, do you, did, do you have anything to do with the other 7-Eleven on the corner of Salem, I mean, on commercial no. industry? Is that a different uh, franchisee? Or? It's a different franchisee, and, you know, it's since it's not under construction, it's not something that's under my ability to make any changes to, but anything that you have, I can certainly read. So there's, there's, you, you, there's no um, no proposed, um, uh, you, you're not going to sell alcohol, correct? And you're not going to ask down the road. It's just what, we, what we're getting right now is what we're going what to What you see is what you have, yes, sir. When you have franchises, don't you usually have um, a mileage zone where you another 7-Eleven, another franchise could not open? 
Why are you opening two 7-Elevens so close to each other? Well, we typically, in a lot of areas, have 7-Elevens typically even like one block away or across the street, you know, depending on where so we have any, any mileage well, the, the only thing that happens is if, uh, and the, the, I don't think that rule really applies anywhere. There used to be a rule that if you franchised a store, and if 7-Eleven built a store within like a one mile radius, that franchisee sort of had like the opportunity to look at purchasing that store. I don't know if that's applicable anymore, because again, I'm more on the construction side, but that did used to be the case. So, but I, that's not really the case anymore. It's really based on the quality of the franchisee and his how he operates his store. There's a lot of other criteria. He just doesn't automatically get it just because he's closed. Is this a franchisee that's opening the new one? Or? This is a corporate store at this point. What's that mean? Nobody owns it? It means that 7-Eleven owns it. It's run by 7-Eleven. It's not franchised. Yes, all, I believe it is. It's, it, it's available for franchise. It's typically run corporate for a period of time to get it up and going and then it's available. For so we don't even know who the owner could be. We have no idea who we is. I mean, what's the Some, someone who 7-Eleven owns it. Okay, 7-Eleven owns it, but it's for sale. So we don't we don't know who who the person is that that purchases it. So we may have to come up with a whole new set. Buy it, Tony. <laughs> I mean, is there a contact want, for right now? If we had issues with the 7-Eleven, who would be the point person? Well, for would right now, it would be me. And then, really, uh, if it becomes more of an operational concern, then I can get you. I'll email you Mary Cadigan's contact information. She's the market manager that covers this area, and uh, she would be the one. And she makes those decisions about you know who is a good candidate that will do a good job operating the store. She makes that decision. So I'll make sure you get that contact information. Does it, Nicole, you had a question? I do. So when you say that there's no alcohol going to be sold in, is that just because corporate owns it, or when the franchisee comes in, can they apply for the alcohol? You know, I believe that they can apply, but uh, but that's just, you know, right now, uh, you know, there's no alcohol. So, and I don't foresee any changes to that. But again, that's more of an operational question than, and again, I can touch base with Mary Cadigan and get you some feedback on that. But, but that's really sort so of out of my mind. So when you say no alcohol sale ever, that's only when 7-Eleven At this point, while it's corporate, yes ma'am, that's correct. Can I ask a question about the sign, the material itself? I'm, I'm not very familiar with the ACM. Is that similar to like track stacking where it's made to look like wood or is it, is it more of a plastic look? Or? No, it's, it's called acrylic composite material. It's, it's, it's just looks almost like, would be the best way to describe it. What's your department? But it's more of a flat, it's, it's a very flat piece. It doesn't look like plastic. I would say it almost looks more like a, like a metal but it doesn't have like a shine to it or a sheen to it like a piece of metal would. Okay. It's definitely more of a flat, so you can put the green on there, and then we have the gold trim, the scalloped edges that goes on it. The thing that I like about the ACM material is it's just very durable. So in you know, 10, 15 years, when I'm not here and not here to take the sign down and replace it with new, it, it has a life, a better life expectancy to it. So the image will last a lot longer. And what about the, the actual 7-Eleven uh, lettering? Is that indented at all, or is that just flat across? Uh, it's actually it's a raised. raised. Oh, it's raised. It's, yeah, it's raised. It's a flat okay. cut out uh, type of material. It's acrylic. Right. Is there any it's additional going signage going in like on these? You know, there's a lot of empty windows here. Yeah. Are, you know, the gonna be like, would not allow that. Yeah. Okay. It was just so, in front of the entry. But no signage whatsoever, not advertising, you know, sell, you know, two Red Bulls for four dollars no. or any of that stuff. No, uh uh. Okay. No, because I think my understanding is you would have to request a permit for that. So you okay. know, and but um, but there's right. that's any temporary signage you'd have to get a permit. Okay. Thank you. Representative, you, you had a question? My uh, my question is in regard to the sign, but more in regard to the operation. Okay. Uh, and you said you were kind of the person that Stephen asked you, you were kind of the point person at the moment uh, yes. to deal with that. Yeah. Um, one complaint I have to have is about the uh, loading uh, of uh, materials or you know goods or whatnot. Okay. Um, more than on one occasion so far, I've seen loading being done at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which isn't as much of a problem in the month of January, okay. uh, you know, for us around here, but uh, we have had uh, issues with other loading um, uh, places loading at that time of night, uh, you know, CVS being one of them, uh, and it causes, it will, it will cause a tremendous amount of traffic uh, come uh, the more uh, peak times, and uh, I, I would hope that that gets, I don't know if that's just a, 
a beginning, trying to get things sorted or sorted out, at, you know, at the beginning of your operation. But uh, in, in terms of the future, uh, you know, we have we have loading zones in this neighborhood. They're okay. from 8, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, we ask that all businesses do the best that, that they possibly can to stay to that, and especially avoid um, loading at night because right. that's just going to be a mess. You know, the one thing that I could, um, well, there's two things. First of all, they get a daily delivery of food because it's made in a commissary and then brought in every single day. So there's going to be a daily delivery. I don't know if that time can be tweaked or not. Sometimes there may be some flexibility in there, but I'm not sure anymore. There's, the other thing is on that side street, there's actually a side door, and I don't know if that would help alleviate some of it, that they could actually load into the side door. I mean, North, North Bennett, Bennett Street? street, street. street. Oh, yeah. Bennett. Oh. Oh. There's like a side door. Yeah, yeah, and again, I'm not very familiar, so I just don't know if that would be an option. Sounds like well, it's not. This, so, this was, on both occasions, this was a massive track trailer. Large trailer. Um, oh, oh, oh it's the McLean grocery truck. delivery truck. The the it's yeah. not the, the truck, delivery. Yeah. It's not the small panel truck for the food delivery. It's no. the grocery truck. No. Okay, got you. If, if I can just take back on that, the, the one on 7 Eleven on the corner of Commercial and Hanover is a, a, a offender of that on a weekly basis, four in the morning, five in the morning. A big tractor trailer is delivering something okay. uh, we, on a weekly basis. So right. I don't know if you're the person to talk to. Uh, no, about I think that. it's Mary, but I can share that with her. And again, I I'm not sure what the flexibility is. It's it's their grocery delivery, and I believe it comes in twice a week. They normally get twice a week delivery. So I'll see if there could be there, flexibility based on your time. Like there, there, we know we have about 120 businesses in the neighborhood that comply with the hours of yes, operations that were granted by the city. So. Whether or not it's flexible for you guys is out of the question. It should be what applies to the neighborhood. We're not going to have Absolutely. trucks pull out by midnight sure. or at 4 o'clock in the morning on Hanover Street to, to deliver food when we have the majority of businesses in the neighborhood are food businesses and get their deliveries within the hours that are granted to mm -hmm. us by the city, which are the hours that allow for commercial parking. Sure. And whether they put the truck at the end of the street and the car drove over or whatever it may be. I mean, I think that 7-Eleven needs to come to the reality that this is not the 7-Eleven, this is the North End. And the I North End, the 7-Eleven is in the North End, not Absolutely. the other way around. So you guys have to really get together and figure those things out. Yeah. And now that we have one a little closer to us, maybe we should apply the same rules to the 7-Eleven on, on, on the end of Hanover Street. That seems to be a, a completely, space. it doesn't matter, but you guys, seem to, you, you guys seem to have a lot of restrictions to how you can operate mm -hmm. and not really consider the restrictions of the neighborhood you operate in. And it should be that other way around, not the way that you think about it. The same thing with construction, going back to the same subject. You know, we try to stick to the rules that the environment sure. give, gives us, not the other way around. Right, no, and I appreciate that, and I understand. I think the reality is is that trying to take everything is centralized out of our corporate office and trying to take that and make sure that it becomes more individual for these neighborhoods and be respectful of the neighborhood, and I agree with you. So the one thing that I can do is, again, report that back to the operations folks, because this is not the only neighborhood that has delivery restrictions. So if we go back to McLean's and say there's a delivery restriction, you're not allowed to do it, I'm assuming that we can make those changes so we can be a good neighbor and, and, and good partner. So, and I, again, I can't make that decision. I apologize, I'm not, as well, but I can get it to Mary Cadigan, and she's, she's you know, very respectful of that as well. So, well, this was actually really supposed to be about proposing the signage, so it's more of a construction. So, um, I wasn't aware that we would need to be answering some operational questions. But again, I can get this feedback to her and I can and get that back to the committee. And usually you should let the uh, know in the future. Usually the way we do business in the North Bank is we have the, the people who are going to be doing business with us come before they start doing business with yeah. us, not the other way around. Yes. Um, whether or not you bought the franchise, whether or not you own the property, we expect our, our neighbors yes. or our future neighbors to participate in the process prior to carrying out the process. Yes. Because I mean, for you to come, come here and give us uh, lip service about what you can and cannot do after the fact doesn't do it any good. So, right. I mean, I mean, I not the purpose of, no, I we understand the lady that doesn't do as much good. But right, I know, but I, I, I mean, and I'm surprised a company like 7 Eleven that has spots all over the country yeah. doesn't have a protocol that says, all right, before we start our franchisee or our franchise or our establishment, they are, do we check with the neighborhood? Do we check with the city? Do we check with the ordinances yeah. that are in place? Mm -hmm. I find it amazing that 7 Eleven doesn't do that. But, you know. Anyway. Well, and we tried to do that, but sometimes, and again, there was this is a project that I picked up kind of mid construction and I sort of jumped on the treadmill at full speed. So some of that had already 
again, some of it had just taken place and some of it I was just not aware that I needed to come to the association meeting. And until we started the signage portion, then we realized we needed to attend those. So again, we sort of learned things along the way on that. Sometimes we do know those things and can get that information in advance. And then sometimes there's just neighborhoods that it's just not. Can I ask you a question? Specific. How many of there are in the Boston, I don't know the total. I know I've remodeled 12 in the last, okay. since so July. Out of, out of the 12 in Boston, Massachusetts, you did not encounter any neighborhood that required anything like that in the city of Boston? Yes, I did. I, I was not hard, required I to I find that hard to believe. Thank you. Yeah. I find that hard to believe because every neighborhood has a neighborhood association. So I find well, it very we, hard. We I find it very hard to believe. Right. Well, questions. we will need to start attending them for the signage mm -hmm. portion, but for the construction portion, it was my, we were I was never informed that we were required to attend. Again, those projects had been scheduled and were under construction when I took them over. So if something had come up, so I find it very hard to believe a company like seven million doesn't yes. know any better. Does anyone else have any questions? No. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion not to, not to support this, the signage on on uh, the uh, just 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 to make a, 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 a point. I second. All right. So there's a motion to oppose um, the uh, signage at one at 340 Hanover Street, um, 711, formerly the White Hen. And there's a motion to second it from you. Um, all in favor? Not to support Seven, eight. This is to oppose, General. To oppose it. Yeah. To oppose it. All, right. All in favor? To oppose. Please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All in favor? One, ten, one. In opposition.